All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Julia, like Joanna said, product engineer on the ArcGIS Pro layout team. Uh, and this is my coworker, colleague, cartographer extraordinaire, Sarah Bell. Best friend. Oh. And best friend. <laughs> we just met yesterday, but um, yeah. <laughs> I'm Sarah Bell. We're going to talk about ArcGIS Pro, which Julia works on, and I work on um, Maps for Adobe, which we're also going to talk about. Um, one of our marvelous product engineers, uh, Ashley, is in the front row. I don't know if Manny's here, but he's also our UI designer. There he is in the back row. Woo. Sweet. So let's get started. Uh, in this presentation, like we said, you'll be hearing about how to best improve your GIS graphic design workflow, but specifically using Pro and Maps for Adobe. Uh, so for some of you guys, this might be your first time hearing about this workflow, maybe your first time hearing about Maps for Adobe. Uh, others of you might be familiar, maybe you're already using it, but wherever you fall on this spectrum, our goal here is to shed some light on how you can leverage the workflow for your maps, for your organization, uh, all of that good stuff. So in the next 20 minutes or so, Sarah and I will be demoing, taking maps and layouts from Pro to Illustrator and introducing several tips, tricks uh, for efficiency and creativity along the way. So after the demo, we'll be sharing some resources, some features and improvements. Uh, hopefully we'll have a bit of time for questions, but we can't do that until we get started. So let's get started. All good presentations begin with setting the stage, which is what I'm going to do now. Uh, and by doing that, we're going to give you a case study. Uh, we're going to base our workflow around something that we think might be familiar to you guys uh, and representative of some of the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So the scenario driving our demo here today uh, is the creation of maps and charts for a magazine article that tells the story of the three large national parks in Washington, which is where we are. How relevant is this presentation already, guys? Uh, this is inspired by organizations that that regularly have several people working on teams, collaborating on one project. So there may be GIS specialists, there may be cartographers, graphic designers, all sharing files and data to create one finished product. Uh, so they're passing iterations of files back and forth, they're adding extra data, they're making design edits, who knows what else. Uh, but at the end of the day, everyone's working together. So today I'll be the GIS specialist working in Pro, and Sarah will be our graphic designer at our organization, consuming my work and making the edits in Illustrator to create one final product. As I mentioned before, we're telling the story of the three large national parks here in Washington, more specifically highlighting the fact that the parks themselves are each 90% federally designated wilderness. So this magazine article that we've been contracted to make maps for is asking us to supplement their story. We'll be creating one map for each of the parks and one overview map. Uh, and so that's, that's kind of where we're at. We're going to switch to Pro and chance a live demo um, here today. And we'll just have it opened up. Perfect. So, so as we're in Pro, uh, we're not. You can't see that. <laughs> Actually, we didn't practice this part. Perfect. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, do you know how to mirror? Uh, Does anyone know how to mirror? Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> you can see it on your shortcuts. Yeah. And if you could clap really loudly so people in other rooms think we're having a really good time. <laughs> yeah. And a moderator, yeah. Sweet. So we're in pro now, as you can all see. Um, we've got a couple of maps and layouts already set up. So I'm just going to quickly walk through the maps, the layouts, the different data layers that we're working with, uh, just to give you a good idea of what we've got going on. So we're starting here in this wilderness maps all map, where we've got a lot of data going on. Uh, we've got layers like the Washington water batteries here, where it's got a bunch of classes, a bunch of symbology. They've all got names. We've got lakes and ponds, marine, reservoir. Similar things going on down here in our federal lands, bunch of classes of data. So other than that, we've got point layers. We've got established campgrounds, as you can see with these little icons. We've got summits. At the end of the day, we've got a lot of stuff going on. You're looking under the hood for a second here just to tie this back in later when you look under the hood in Illustrator. Uh, but Moral of the story, we've got things going on. Uh, we've also got an indicator map here, um, which is an in, it's gonna be our inset map. Uh, not much to talk about, you guys know all about those. I do wanna point out we have a standalone table here for visitorship. So this is gonna come into play later when we make a chart, uh, but just wanted to point that out as well. We've also got four layouts. We've got our North Cascades, our Mount Rainier, 
our Olympic and our full state map. So I'm going to stop here at the Mount Rainier map for just a quick second. And as you may have noticed as I was clicking through, or maybe you didn't, uh, these are all different sized layouts. Uh, so one of the things that the magazine has asked us to do is create these very custom sized uh, maps for the journal article. And one thing that is very important when doing all this pre-setup work in Pro before going to Illustrator is that you should be setting your custom page size. So if you go into the layout here in our properties, you'll see that this is a custom size of 7.5 by 5.5 inches. Um, and that is, again, exactly the size that our article has asked for. The super cool thing with this workflow is that if you are exporting out as an AIX, this will be remembered. So when you export this out, you open it in Illustrator, your artboards will be exactly the same size. There'll be no reshaping needed, no dragging, clicking, any of that stuff. Everything will already be exactly the size you need it to be. So that's one of those pre-setup things uh, and the reason I'm talking to you today is so you can best uh, set yourself up for success in Illustrator. So we'll just go right over here to our full state map as well. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Uh, and you can see here that we have our chart. Uh, <laughs> We've got our chart here. Uh, one important thing I wanted to point out with charts here in Pro on layout, this is just a frame. Um, so the chart lives in the frame, but as you can see, it has no children. You can't expand this out. You can't change things up. You can do that with the symbology elsewhere, but on the layout, it is just a frame that you can turn on and off. So uh, that's most of what we've got to talk about in Pro. You've kind of got an idea. We've got a bunch of maps, a bunch of layouts, a bunch of data. Um, and all I'm trying to do now is get it to Sarah in the cleanest way possible. Um, so to do that, we are going to export it out. So I'm going to click out on the Share tab up top here. And we are going to go in this Output section. Um, as you can see here, this Export Layout button is a split button. The top half of the button will open your export pane, and it'll default to whatever you last exported out. But the bottom half of the button here, this is a drop-down gallery. So as you can see in here, there are things called export presets. Um, and this first one here is titled Default AIX. So I'm going to click on that, uh, and as you can see, it's going to open up our export pane over here. Now you may be asking yourself, what is an AIX preset? What is that? Uh, what is an export preset itself? And that is a very easy question to answer. Uh, basically, export presets were new in ArcGIS Pro 3.0, which basically allow users to save export settings for reuse. So the great thing about export presets is that uh, you can create your own specific, specific uh, to your work, your organization. But we have also created some common presets for you guys to utilize right outside the box. So one of those presets, as you probably could guess, is the AIX preset, in which we work together, my team and Sarah's team to choose the optimized settings for exporting a layout specifically to Maps for Adobe. Now I could go into the minutia of what all of those things mean on that block box of an export pane, uh, which I won't, but I will tell you a couple of things that may be of interest. There's a lot of quality documentation about what is going on in this pane if you want to look up more later. Um, but mostly I want to speak to you. We've got this quality slider here. We've set that at 80, and that's basically the amount of image compression that's applied to the export. So a smaller file size will have less clear data. Uh, bigger quality will have a, fi a larger file size. Vector resolution is something familiar to a lot of you guys in the room. This is set at DPI dots per inch, uh, referring to the number of ink droplets that a printer will produce by printing. Uh, so more dots is more detail. And then finally, down here, we've got uh, this image compression dropdown. We've set it as adaptive. Um, and this basically combines two other types of image compression, which is JPEG and deflate, depending on the contents of the stream. So this is just generally the best uh, for a lot of situations. So we've got it set there. So again, lots of things going on, but that's a bit of what went into deciding what was best for you all. So now uh, you're a little more familiar with the AIX preset and file type, uh, but I'm sure you're asking yourself why, uh, and you're so right for that, question authority. Um, but I think there are a lot of us in the crowd that have exported our layout as a PDF to Illustrator a lot of times, uh, despite the pitfalls of that action. Clipping masks, uh, your vector lines are broken up into a million pieces, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, simply put, this is just an easier and better way. So all of those annoying things you might be running into uh, when exporting as a PDF, they kind of are trying to at least be solved by the AIX file format. The AIX file format itself enables uh, the full exchange of information from Pro to Illustrator pretty seamlessly. 
It's also important to note that the Adobe Illustrator file format is proprietary. That's that .ai, uh, which means that we had to give Pro a new file format to play nicely with that, which is where the .aix file format comes in. Lastly, having this file format allows us to continue to update and uh, serve you guys as best as we can, especially as we and uh, Pro, uh, sorry, Adobe update our technologies. Uh, so making sure you guys can create and rely on workflows uh, that don't break whenever we update. So all I'm going to do is hit export here, and I'm going to pass it over to Sarah to get into Illustrator uh, because oh oh god oh I'm going to I'm going to cancel <laughs> I'm not going to export <laughs> and Sarah's going to go <laughs> okay um, oh export canceled all right yeah so, look how fast um, <laughs> I'm going to uh, try to use a mouse in this very small mouse real estate. Um, thanks, Julia. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. Um, I already have a few files open. This is the this is the Olympic AIX file that Julia shared with me, and I was able to open it because I have ArcGIS Maps for Adobe installed, which we'll share a link for that in the end. Um, but if you have any extension installed in Adobe Illustrator, you just go to the Windows menu, Extensions, Flyout, and you'll find them all there. I'm already signed in, so I'm just going to show you the three panels that are associated with Maps for Adobe. The first one is what we call the Map Boards panel. And as you can see, uh, the map extent of that, of that Olympic map is already loaded here. And that's because an AIX file made with ArcGIS Pro is connected to Maps for Adobe. So um, that's pretty cool. But also, you can make a map from start to finish right here in Adobe Illustrator using Maps for Adobe. And you would start your map in the Map Boards panel. Um, for example, you could draw a map, create a, a map, um, basically. Um, whatever parameters you wanted, pixels, inches, whatever, and then set your extent where you want it on the Earth, and then add your data in what we call the compilation panel. And the compilation panel, like I said, is where you add your data. So for example, I'm signed into my ArcGIS Online account, so I can search for my content that I have in ArcGIS Online. I can also just go to ArcGIS Online and look for something like counties. And the internet is super fast here, so um, <laughs> uh, so I could add this to my map, and this I we press sync, so that would add a new layer to this Illustrator file that I have already open. Or you know, if I was making a map from scratch, that's where I would do that. And then we have this processes panel, the third and final panel, and this is where you can do some expedient cartographic things to your map, um, and I'm going to show you one of them in a moment. So first, I want to note that this map is exactly how Julia styled it in Pro. Um, that's OK, because <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> that, that, because um, OK, anyway. <laughs> That's the whole point, right? We're in Illustrator, and we want to use the graphic design in Illustrator. So I took this map, um, which you see here, and in Illustrator, did this. Same exact file to make this map. Um, I also want to point out that layer structure. Julia mentioned the pitfalls of a PDF and the benefits of a Where's my mouse? Okay, of, a, of an AIX file. So I have this layer organization matches exactly that Julia set up in Pro, which is awesome. So she called out the water bodies um, layer. That has its discrete parent layer. And within that, there are other sublayers for each of those categories. For example, the marine layer, which is all the salt water on this map. I could go ahead and change the color very easily because it's in one layer instead of everything in one single layer and no names at all. Um, it's pretty nice. Um, I also want to point out that Julia, I'm going to do this, um, added the world navigation vector tile base map layer. So I'm, if you hit Alt and click that eyeball area, you can isolate the visibility of layers in Illustrator, which I'm doing right now, to show you all the layers that came in with that vector tile base map layer. And in, when you add a map to ArcGIS Pro, vector tile base map to ArcGIS Pro or ArcGIS Online, you only see the name of that. You don't see these sublayers because you don't have to. It wouldn't make any sense. When you zoom in and out, the layers change. But when you export it from Pro, everything is kind of like baked, right? And I love this because what I do is you can, you can grab like uh, all of the admin and do the same thing, color them however you want. You, let's say you don't want it to look like a default vector tile base map. But also, um, I use this, for example, just for these highways and these streams. And I deleted everything else. And that was really easy, because it was really easy to see which layers um, I wanted to delete. I'm going to click Undo and turn everything back on. Um, the next thing I want to show you is about Adobe Illustrator Symbols Libraries. So who knows what these are? 
Um, I see a couple hands. Okay, well, what they are is they're a really great way to create and maintain icons for graphic design. And for maps, they are great for things like point icons, right? So, like, for example, if you work somewhere um, or are trying to make icons for a Utah awesome map, um, you can, or you're using this bicycle thing, your company uses this bicycle icon for every bike infrastructure location on your map. You don't have to recreate the icon every time. You can just maintain it in this thing called a symbols library. Um, and I have this one called cartography symbols over here. So you just see, you just drag them on and you place them where you need. Well, I'm gonna do with Maps for Adobe, replace a bunch of symbols automatically with a clip, click of a button. So our um, customers, or clients in this case, um, did not like this campground symbol, and they wanted us to replace it with their um, custom campground symbol. So I turned on some land and some, some all the, I just isolated these layers for the sake of this demo. And what they wanted us to use is this campsite minimal green. I know the layer names are really hard to see, but where my cursor is, if you can see that, that says campsite minimal green. So I'm going to automatically replace all of those camps, those tents with this symbol. Um, so to do that from, in Maps for Adobe, I just copy uh, the name, because it is Kate's sensitive, of this symbol. I go back to this map. And now I have to rename the layer of, of, that has all of those campground symbols. Um, cool, so then Maps for Adobe knows where those, those symbols are located that I want to replace. And I go to the Processes panel, and I set path, or basically what that means is point to the symbols library that it has the symbol I want. And then I just click Replace Symbols. We give it a moment to do that. And then boom, they're all automatically replaced. Also, it's placed into the symbols panel of that file. So if you have, which I have done many maps like this. I used to work with Chuck, and he has maps like this as well. Um, hundreds of symbols in a layer, and you know, dozens of those symbols. You can do all of those symbols at once with a click of a button if you have them in a symbols library. Um, and the final thing I want to show you before I go is Julie mentioned charts. Um, and that they don't have that layer structure that you see in Pro, but we do organize them in Illustrator um, in, in an AIX file, which you see here, so it's really easy to edit them in the same way. Hi, Pat. Um, as <laughs> um, righty. And remember that I am on the wrong slide. Can you see my screen? It's a very Zoom call. Um, Sweet, okay, awesome. Remember that Julia started with a specific size because this is for a magazine layout, and she started that in Pro. I brought it in Illustrator, it maintained that size, which is great because it has to resolve perfectly in a magazine layout. So you can take it from Adobe Illustrator and place it in something like InDesign, if you use InDesign, and then you place it in your map magazine, and it all fits nicely um, for this really great map making workflow. Now I'm gonna hand it back to Julia. Yeah, that's about what we've got. Uh, we've got a little bit of some resources on how to get started, uh, but there we've got the Maps for Adobe product page, uh, the As We Learn tutorial to get started with Maps for Adobe. If you really are interested in presets, there's a link down there for you too. Uh, most importantly, thank and you. Uh, we'll be up here and around if you have any more questions, uh, but we do have a little QR code for you to scan too, uh, and that's what we've got. Thanks for coming.